What? My favorite game has a solo mode? All right, so here's the deal. Seven Wonders Duel is one of my favorite games of all time. In fact, I love the game so much that I already have two videos on this channel about it. One is a review, and the other video is a complete playthrough of the game where Joel and I go against each other and make fun of each other a lot and all that good stuff. But here's the thing, in order to play Seven Wonders Duel, you have to have exactly two people. But apparently back in 2020, they made a solo version of the game and then bothered to send me a message and say, hey, thanks for saying this is your favorite game. We made a solo version. We thought you might like to try it. The moment I saw this, I printed it off and I almost played it right away, but I thought, you know, I should save this. So I turned the camera on so you get to experience it with me the first time playing through it. We're going to be going against either Cleopatra or Aristotle because those are two of the names that I can confidently say over and over again in the video. And I'm going to get the base game out, set it up, and we should be all ready to go. All right, so we start off with a fairly normal setup here, except on this side, this is a solo play component. So if you've never played the game before, all of this actually looks totally normal. We got these tokens up here. We got our board to try to fight the military. We got our science military, and these are all the cards we're gonna draft. This is the new solo element over here. So we have Aristotle sitting here. He starts out with law and mathematics and a deck of cards. This is pretty standard for lots of solo games. He's going to go through these cards and flip them one per turn, and they will tell me where we will draft. To show you one example real quick, this says to draft the green card starting left to right. So if we flip this one first, he would take that green card. If there were no green cards available, he would go on to the next one, which would be the red card. If they ever show this symbol, it's specific to his card, which says a great card. And these are the seven coins I start out with right there. All right, so wonder drafting works a little different. It says to flip out three cards. I pick two. He takes whatever I don't pick. So I'm going to take this resource one, and I think this resource one here. Take three more. Ooh, so I could take these two. I love these wonders, but that would give Aristotle a ton of military. You know, I'm gonna go for it. And the game says to start out as if these wonders are already built and to do the effect. So this one has no effect actually. The victory points will count at the end, but the military does move three at the beginning. So we're gonna start off with two fewer coins. All right, so it says in the solo game, the enemy always goes first. So he will go first and flip this over. This says starting from right to left, he's going to draft the first green card, which is that one right there. Now I have to be really careful because he already has a scientific symbol right here. He has another one. He's only, what, four from winning the game now. All right, my turn. I hate doing this, but I'm gonna start off by drafting a military because he already has such a big lead in the military and that one's free. Back to Aristotle. Okay, so he's going to start from this side and he's going to draft his color card, which he doesn't have any grays out there. Reading the rules. Oh yeah, yeah, so their first choice isn't out there, left to right, this is my card, so there are no grays, it's like his symbol. We are going to go on to his next card, which is red. So he does take this card right here, military, he's gonna move that one back, and we're gonna reveal this card, be good. Ooh, okay, I'm definitely buying that card. So I'm gonna take this gold card right here. I'm gonna spend three for it. Back to his turn, he's going to go from this way. There are no green cards, so he's gonna do another sweep. And this is red card. So he will take the first red card here. I'm just going to stack these up so I'm not going to have room. He moves another red. I don't know how many red cards are left in this round. I'm actually going to toss this red card here and take the three coins for that. Ooh, resources. Okay. Resources I might actually want. So he's up again. I actually might have made a mistake already. Let's see here. Okay, good. If this symbol here matches their symbol there, they get to go again. But it did not match. That's a triangle. That one's a circle. Okay, so the rules say if none of the cards out here, so left or right, there are no greens, there are no reds, there are none of a special, none of them match, just take the first available card in that direction. This is a pretty tough decision, but I think I'm gonna go for this brown right here, which is free for me, on to his turn. Takes the first available red, none, first available green, none, no brown. So he's gonna take this random one right here. Back to my turn, I'm definitely gonna spend three and take this gold card right here. Back to his turn. I'm guessing he's going to have a go again here pretty soon. So, ooh, okay. So he's going to get another green symbol. Lots of these cards have green on them. So, okay, I'm going to flip over this one. Um, I don't really need this one because I have a price fix on that. So I might go for spending one for this paper here. All right, back to his turn. He flips this over. No reds, no green. So he's going to take this brown. Okay, I might regret this, but I'm going to throw this card away and take the four coins. Back to him, he only has three cards left, or four maybe then a reshuffle. Okay, so here, nothing, nothing. He's gonna throw away, or not throw away, take this gold card since nothing matches. I think I will take the money right now, get my money problem. I shouldn't need much more money for the rest of the game since I do have 
money wonder and another money wonder. So I'm guessing I won't need a lot more money for the rest of the game. Okay, so he flips a card over here. One card. No greens, no reds. Once again, he's just going to take the first available one in the card order. Okay, so this wonder right here just cost me three. So I think I'm going to do that. So I have a couple price fixes here. I have wood cost one each, one, two. The clay costs one, so that's three. Then this, so that's, that's a cost of three. And I now make that and I get to go again. So this one only costs me two. And I get, I can spend the cost of two. And I only have four back for building it. So I'm going to take this, and put this right here. And then I want to go first the next round because he's leading in the military. So I'm tempted to use just this other go again and go ahead and build this guy, which would cost free. So that only cost me two. So I would definitely do that. So these resource wonders are really nice. So now I have, I probably will forget because I'm really prone to forget, especially that one. But there we go. I got some resources now. Like I'm really liking my economy here, but I'm sort of regretting letting him get these two wonders because I really have to play defensive in this and the and the green. So the way the greens work, if he ever matches a green symbol, you look at the direction of the arrow and take whatever token is out there, which that wouldn't hurt me at all for him to take, but that one would. All right, on the age two, so far so good. This is really fun. He's ahead in the military, so I go first and I feel like I have to take this card right here. I will simply throw it away and get five coins on him. Ooh, he has not gotten his go again. So I'm guessing this last card or last two cards are gonna be his go again. So, okay, no, no, none of them. So he's gonna take another victory point. I might have to add these up at some point. He's like taking a lot of victory points. So back to my turn, I might have to take this because he's doing really well in the military. So this is why I say kind of evokes the same feeling of the original game, because I feel like there are a lot of moves I'm doing just because I'm forced into them. So that cost me one because I got a free one there and price fix there. So I'm going to move this two and then flip this over. I would actually love right now to flip a gray card for him to take a gray card because that doesn't really hurt me that much right now. So, all right, there we go. There is his little circle symbol. So he's going to start from this end and take gray. There are no grays, there are no greens. He's at the first available card. That's actually a pretty lucky pick for me um, since he doesn't really use the resources. And, but he does go again. So he's going to take a red card if I flip one over, which I probably will. I did. So he's going to flip, take the first red card in this direction, which is the only one out there. So I'm going to take this red card right here and move forward one. So I shuffled these. You might be thinking that the paper quality of these looks a little cheap, but that's okay. It was a free version. It was a free print and play. So if I enjoy it, I will probably go back later and print on good like cardstock and then leave it in the box as a little nicer set. So I'm going to go ahead, I think, and build this one, which is going to be free. So I've started a little bit of my, a little bit of a end game score. So I think this might actually go to end game here. So I'm gonna just keep this here. I'm sorry, it's a lot to fit in the camera. I feel, I think it's a true statement that it hurts me worse than it hurts you, but I am squishing a lot of stuff into the camera here. He's gonna start off with red, there are none, and then green, thankfully, there are none. And then he goes on to a special, which is gray, and that's gonna be this one right here. That's what I was hoping would happen. And then hopefully he flips over a green or a red. Cool. This is free for me. So I'm gonna take this red one, build this. I would love to do something different, but at this point, I'd like to get this military push back just a little bit. It'd be cool to win the military track, but that would be a long way to go right now. So I'm not expecting that. So pick green, none, none, none of anything. So he's gonna take this gold card right here. I might wanna take this one in a two player game, but I don't really mind if he takes that. So I'm gonna take this card, which is also free for me, with the hopes of him revealing something for me good. So let's see here, he takes none, none, none. So he's gonna flip, take this one right here. He's gonna flip over this. This is fun, I really like this version so far. So, okay, same situation as before. I just wanna delay him a little bit. So I'm gonna take another victory point one. I have a price fix on these. I don't have them, it's gonna cost me two. So I spent two for that. Back to his turn. Lawrence doesn't get a double right now. Oh no, oh no, he got a double. Okay, I'm, I'm good though. So he takes from left to right, he's going to take this gold. And then he's going to go again. He's going to take this way. There's not, oh, it worked out well for him though. That, that's unfortunate. So he's going to take this card next. I was really, really hoping he was going to take that card. So it's tempting for me right now to use my go again wonder. I know I might need it in a more dire spot, but I feel like what's underneath this card could really hurt me. Okay, so I'm going to choose to not use my go again. Do I need this card? I could use it, I guess. 
It cost me four. I'm just going to save the money in case I need it. So I don't think I really need that card. So I'll save the money. Okay, so now this is the bad news. Yep. So he's going to take the green card. So he's going to do this one right here. So when he matches one, he gets a green special token up here, but the match is the same symbol. So it doesn't count as two separate ones. So it's actually kind of good, especially because from the left here, he's going to take this here, which is going to give him more victory points with his mathematics. So this is going to help him out. But again, it's better than him possibly ending the game early. So I need to refill that green. I take the screen right here. He cannot win by green card, which would be kind of nice. I'm going to do this because I want to go first next round. So I'm going to go ahead and build my last wonder. So this cost me two, and I get one back after building it. I'm going to use my go again. And again, I just don't want to risk this. So this doesn't do me any good at all, so I would just toss it. This is how seven wonders work. Sometimes you start getting money. You really don't need it, and you just consistently get money. So, okay, the end of his turns don't matter too much here. He's going to go this way. He's going to pick up. This is the first card available he would want. For me, I might as well build this card and get the six points. All right, we're on to the last phase. I'm just going to do a little strategizing here real quick. I have tons of money. I'm just going to buy the most expensive blue card I can get for the most part. That's kind of what I want to do. I have to be kind of safe with the military because you could get it. So I might need to buy one military card, but all right, let's do it. By the way, if you haven't ever played before, the way I organize these cards, it's actually in the rules. Right here, there's actually a structure. Every age is a unique kind of drafting setup. I'm going to lead off by taking this one, which is free for me. And again, I go first because he's winning in the military. Whoever's losing in the military gets to go first the next round. Okay, he simply takes this green card here. He could have, this is actually a very valuable card, so I really don't want to get this card. That's three points. If he did get that, three, and he happened to draft in that direction, that'd be a pretty bad thing to happen to me. So, oh, I picked that card last time. I should have gotten three coins for, three coins for my one gray. Okay, I think I'm going to go for this one, which is going to cost me one. So this here cost me one, and I get a point for, or a gold for every red card. So I get three gold back for that. Now Mr. Aristotle's going to go. He's going to take a green card. So again, I'm safe on the scientific, scientific tokens, but he could start adding these up pretty big. So um, this is kind of risky. I won both these cards very badly. This one here is going to give you a coin, a, a victory point for every coin, and I have tons of money. But this card here, if it drafts in the right direction, it's going to be worth three. It's going to be worth 10 points for him. But this card is worth nine points it's a nine point swing it's nine points for either one of us so i think i gotta take this card right here so this card is going to cost me three so i have a guild card i haven't played with guild cards for so long so it's a guild card now by some i want to be nope uh, i was hoping for the arrow in the other direction but the arrow is going in that direction meaning he's going to take this card so he's going he gets a match because he already had that one down there, so that is a match. But he takes one, he takes in the direction of that arrow, so he gets this philosophy. That's actually a bigger point swing than I thought it was, because he's going to get this. He got the points on that card. He also got philosophy, but he also has mathematics, which gives him extra points every one. So that was a lot of points for him to score right there. So, okay, we need to get some points here. So this card here, that's free for me. So I'm going to, I don't really care if things are free for me. I just feel like I need to get the most points possible. So that's that. He is going to go. This is not his go again, but he's going to start in his order. Nothing, nothing. Oh, that's good. So he's going to take this card. It is worth three points, but lots of things are going to be worth points at the end of the game here. So, and I'm going to go with this one right here, which is free for me. So I'm going to take this one. It gives me six coins now. And then he is up. All right, he's going to do red. Nothing. Okay, so he's going to take this one right here. That's six points, which is going to be pretty good for him. I will, there's actually not a lot of the military ones being exposed yet, so there are some, like that, some big military ones in this phase, we just haven't seen them yet. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle his cards up. Man, these are really tough decisions. It really depends on what's underneath them, too. So, um, I will take this one, because in either way, if he takes this, I'm pretty happy with that choice. If he takes this, I'm pretty happy with that choice. So, this one here is worth a few more points than it looks, because it also gives me eight for the wonder. So three at the end, eight for the wonders, and also a victory point for the gold card I have. So flip this over. Let's see what he does here. Really any way here, it's gonna have the same thing. So I'm gonna take this card here, which is a solid choice by his part. Flip this over. Ooh, okay, the big military one. So 
Um, I could guarantee I get both of them. I could take this now. He has to give me that one. I could take that one. But that might be giving him 11 victory points. You know, I think I think the military is going to be the right move here. So that's going to be eight right there, at least for the first one. We'll kind of see what he does and maybe reevaluate. But one, two, three. Because if it goes to five points for me and or 11 points for him, it's a 16-point swing. You know what? No, 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 no. I thought about that wrong. I will go for the blue card first. The blue card, I think, might be a bigger swing here. So it's a, it's, it could be a 22-point swing. So I'll, I'll go for that card instead of spending eight. Could it be free for me? It is. It's free for me. So that's free. On to his turn. He's going to take the first military card. So he, oops, <laughs> one, two, three. So this might be the right move for me to take now because then he'll hopefully expose two things for me. So... I will do this one now just to keep him from throwing away coins, which I get points for coins at the end of the game. So I have to pay two for the clay. And then the wood, I have to pay one for each of those. So it does cost me four, but it pushes him back. Please don't go again. This will be the one time I don't want you to do it. Okay, so he's going to take this, which is again, not great for me. And then we have this and this. Um, oops, I never refilled that. So he could get strategy, which won't matter. And he could get coins, which don't matter either. So. It's actually nice. I'm not worried about this at all. So that's actually a very, very, very fortunate pick for me. So I'm going to take this one right here, which cost four. And then please don't go again now. Okay, he takes this. That gives him another symbol, which he's going to take strategy, which is three more points for him. But I wish I had to go again right now. So now it just depends on which one of those two is worth more. All right, just so we don't mess up here again. If I took this one, I would get three points plus basically two points of money, maybe a third one depending on how it goes on. And so and then also one more point for that one. So this pick right here would give me six points, I believe. It could be seven depending on where my money ends up exactly. Actually, it looks like it would be seven. This would give him seven. If I take this card though, um, that would give me seven. If he takes this card, he doesn't get the money. So I believe it's the right move for me to take this one right here. It costs me three. All right, and he is going to take, I'm sure, this last card right there. All right, so I'm going to use a scorecard here. It's me going against Aristotle, and we'll just go down the list as usual. All right, so I start out with a 48 in blue card. That's a lot of points in blue card, but I think he has a lot too. All right, so he has 10, 20, 26. Up next is green card. I was looking for my green cards, but I guess I don't have any green cards. All right, so he has 13 in green cards. I have none. All right, so for yellow cards, he has six. Oops, I was hoping I'd beat him by more, but I only have nine in there. Now his guild card says a city with the most blue cards gives him one victory point per blue card. So he ended up with, so he ended up with six. I have seven, so I gave him seven points for that. I get one point for every three coins I get. And also I have one point for every yellow card. So that's seven in the yellow card. I'm gonna go ahead and just count my money up because the money for this is the same score as you get for money in here. So I'll do both at the same time. So, so I have 11, 11 plus seven is 18. Then also I get 11 for the money down here. Wonders, he got six. I have 12. Now this is where it looks really bad for me. I have none for green and none for military. They have two for military. And I saved the worst news for last year. So seven points, doesn't seem that bad, but this is three per symbol over here. So this is 15 plus seven, 22. All right, so he totals up to 82 points here. All right, so I have 98 points here. So it wasn't as close as I thought it was gonna be actually. I thought that would be a lot closer. I thought I might have actually lost. One thing I'm not 100% sure on is it said that they do not give them coins at the beginning of the game. And also that they don't pay for anything in the game, but it wasn't quite clear about whether they should be collecting coins throughout the game if they had cards that should have given them coins. Like for example, that blue one right there, or that one right there. Thankfully, I beat him by enough that it really wouldn't matter. I dominated, I almost said Apollos, but this is Aristotle. But yeah, this is cool. I really, really, really like this. It really gave you that feeling. I guess this game just sets itself well up for solo mode because it gives you all that same feeling of like, how do I prepare my draft? I also thought the unique setup was really interesting because this guy started out with so much green that I gave him so much military. I had to focus on that too much. All right, so that is a playthrough of Seven Wonders Duel Solo. It's an awkward game. Seven Wonders, seven player game. Duel, two player game. Solo, so there's only three player counts in one name now. 
but I don't care. That's okay. I hope you liked watching as much as I like playing. This was super fun. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below. It really helps the channel out. Also subscribe if you want to see more playthroughs. I'll do some teaches of games and also some reviews.